I don't know whether you've heard, but I'm offering some spaces in my calendar for supercharge your fertility discovery calls. So this call is for you if you're ready to get pregnant naturally or improve your chances at the fertility clinic. We take a functional approach to fertility. It's the future of conventional medicine. There is a reason that so many medical professionals work with us. The approach is rooted in science. The call is for both you and your partner, and all you do is go to fabfertile, F-A-B-F-E-R-T-I-L-E.com and click on book a free call. Then you'll be booked in and ready to spend the 30 of the most valuable minutes on your fertility ever. Bodies love healthy fats and once we, and it satisfies us, right? Like, I don't know about you, but like if I forget to eat enough fat one day, the next day, all I want is like French fries. And that's my signal. Like anytime I crave French fries, I'm like, oh, Katie, like you might not have had enough healthy fat. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Clark, and my mission is to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Most of all, I want you to wake up. So with functional medicine, we can discover what causes infertility and eventually reverse the condition. Today, I'm welcoming Katie Brasek to the podcast, and we're digging into blood sugar and the impact on your fertility. Katie Brasek is an award-winning health coach who specializes in women's hormonal health. With Katie's support, the women she counsels prepare their bodies for pregnancy, increase energy levels, get their periods back and on track, lose weight, eat healthier, and maintain a balanced mood. Katie runs a successful one-on-one -on -one coaching business and has group programs that have helped hundreds of women support their health and hormones. Katie believes every woman can feel healthy and vibrant by making the best nutritional and lifestyle changes that support their body in the best way possible. Katie lives in Los Angeles with her husband and dog Piper. When Katie is not health coaching, you can find her on her yoga mat, watching movies, reading. She loves a good romance novel, walking on the beach, hiking, and spending time with friends. You can learn more about Katie on her website at Katie, K-A-T-I-E, Bresek, B-R-E-S-S-A-C-K.com, and feel inspired to live a healthier life by following her on Instagram at Katie Bresek. Before we jump into today's show, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this to make sure you never miss an episode. Hey, Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, excited to dig into our topic. So before, before we do that, yeah, if you could share with us how you really came to do this work. Yeah, so it's so interesting because looking back, I was like, oh, I guess I was always been really interested in my period and my hormones. I always tracked on my calendar growing up. Like I would put a little dot when I got my period and how many days I had it. And I was always kind of investigating that. But I have to admit that I really didn't notice my hormones until I was in my mid to late 20s when I was living in New York City. It was one of those times where I really felt like I was doing everything to be healthy. And all of my friends were kind of in the same boat. Like we were all very stressed out. We were all trying to climb that corporate ladder. We were all like experimenting with different diets and different foods and not one of us felt good. <laughs> like no matter like what was going on, no matter like how often we moved our body, like what food we were putting in our body, we all kind of just felt like flat often. And I was getting sick all the time and I couldn't figure out what was causing myself to be sick. Like I felt like I was doing as much as I possibly could as someone who in her mid twenties living in New York city. <laughs> and it was one of those moments when I got this crazy sinus infection and I had it for a year. Mm, been there. Yeah. It, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. And, like I kept go to the doctor and be like, it's back. And they kept giving me antibiotics. Yep. Like, well, okay. I've been doing this for almost a year. Obviously this is not working. Like, I don't know what else to do, but you know, growing up, like if you're sick, you go to the doctor, you get medicine, mm -hmm. you know? And I found a holistic doctor and this was over 10 years ago. So this was kind of before it was as mainstream, and I don't even know if it's as mainstream as I think it is That's right. in my bubble, right? It's mm -hmm. mainstream, but probably not to everybody. And she sat with me for an hour. First of all, I was shocked. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I, I didn't even know doctors 
spend time like that with their patients. And she asked me all these questions. She was like, ask me about my stress. And I was like, oh well, yeah, I mean, yeah, like work, it's a, it's a lot, you know. She asked me about like what I was eating. She asked me about sleep, what I like to do for fun. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, what does this have to do with my reoccurring sinus infections? Mm -hmm. And then she just started to explain to me about how the overuse of antibiotics is so harmful for the women's bodies and all of the important gut flora that keeps our immune system healthy. If you keep destroying the good and the bad bacteria with antibiotics, like, of course, you're going to get sick more often. Of course, you're going to be more cranky and irritable and have mm -hmm. issues with food. You know, I thought I was lactose intolerant because yeah. every time I ate dairy, I would get like so sick. And we were talking about, you know, every time that I was stressed out, I would reach for the ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we talked all about, about kind of like that mind body food connection, but also the stress and how it was literally like disrupting not only my body health, but like my hormones. And it was kind of the first time I was like, oh, so my hormones play a bigger role than I thought they were. So it was that moment where I was like, okay, let me figure this out. She gave me prescription. I put that in quotes for a neti pot mm. probiotics. And she's like, girl, you need to learn how to like de-stress. Like you got to go to yoga. You got to learn how to meditate. <laughs> You're way too young to be this stressed out. So I really took her her advice to heart and it seriously changed my life. I started going to yoga every day. I became a yoga teacher. And then it was there that I was like, I don't think that I belong in digital media and digital ad sales anymore. And decided to focus on holistic health and slowly became in tune with women's health, women's hormones. And then I'll tell you what, when I was planning my wedding in my early thirties, I definitely felt my hormones then. And I have really noticed <laughs> my hormones every year since change, but being able to support that change, I'm, I'm going to be 40 in March. Mm -hmm. And it's been really eye-opening and really helpful to know how to take care of my body, but really, really support my hormones. And what I love about what I do and what I love about what you do is that really getting that information out there that your hormones are more than just your period every month. You know, I feel like growing up, that was like the only conversation I had with my mom about my body was the fact that I got my period. We had a five minute conversation and that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the fact that like hormones regulate pretty much everything in your body has been really eye opening and something that I find fascinating and I love sharing. Amazing. Amazing. And so are you, uh, you said you're lactose intolerant. Have you made sort of the, those, some dietary switches then, or what have you done? You know, it's really interesting because after I feel like I can have goat cheese, I can have a little bit of like goat dairy once in a while and my body is okay. Definitely cannot handle any sort of dairy from a cow anymore. Mm -hmm. So I kind of cut dairy out for a really long time and I've just been slowly experimenting. You probably do this a lot as well with right. your work. <laughs> You're always like, so where's my body at now? So I know like if, it, if for some reason it's put in a sandwich or a salad and I don't know that it's there, my body doesn't respond in the same way. But I definitely have discovered that gluten, I have a severe intolerance to gluten. And I was like, the cheese and cracker girl, like everyone in college, all my roommates in college, like it was funny. They were always like, what are you eating today? Like got my cheese and my crackers. <laughs> Two things that I, that were staples to my diet that when I was going through this transition in my life, realizing, oh, these things actually aren't supporting me. But with gluten now, every time I have anything with gluten in it, my whole body like swells. I can't take my rings off or I get really bad headaches and automatic like stuffiness in my nose. Goes right to the sinus, huh? Yeah. But it took me a while to kind of disassociate because I always had cheese with some sort of bread, <laughs> with some sort of gluten. Yeah. So I was like, what is what? And finally realizing like a little bit of dairy once in a while, not every day, but when I do, I won't get that. TMI, like crazy running to the bathroom thing, but I definitely try to avoid gluten 
as much as much as possible. Yeah, I, I don't do dairy, gluten, or corn, and I've sort of I've got non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and really for dairy, I, yeah, I've just embraced coconut, coconut milk. And, oh God, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, well, I realized I don't, I don't really miss it, but yeah, yeah, and I realized too that like I the only time I really wanted dairy was when I was stressed out. So I was like, Katie, uh, maybe you should learn how to find something else that's also comforting. That's right. <laughs> Besides the, the dairy, yeah. yeah. The but you know, once in a while, I'm like, oh God, I just miss having that. And, um, so I try to avoid things that cause inflammation as much as possible, but I also try to not be so restrictive on things that I know my body can handle a little bit of. So that way with the gluten, I can be really focused on what I know my body is like totally cannot tolerate at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit easier to hang out with friends <laughs> and family members. I know some people, we have people start off by doing the elimination diet and then they're like, oh my goodness, how am I going to go to a restaurant? And it's like, it's only for a short period of time. And then we do the food sensitivity test. So you kind of, kind of dig in there further, but it's sort of as, yeah, as you begin to calm down these things going on in your body, then you, you allow your, the, the gut to heal and then potentially you can bring it back in later. I, I think anyone yeah. trying to conceive, I, we don't recommend bringing back in gluten for sure, dairy, mm-hmm dairy for a while. Gluten, I've yeah. got um, uh, Dr. Tom O'Brien coming on the podcast, not sure when his will air, probably in November, and talking about actually studies now find people with in- infertility, both couples to go gluten-free, and they found a, a, a market improvement with people doing that. So Yeah, we've yeah. been doing this, we've been gluten-free for over two years now, and the interesting thing about being gluten-free is when we travel, my body can handle a little bit of gluten when I travel. Hmm. So I did a bunch of research and realizing that like they've actually manipulated all of the wheat crops in this country. Oh, travel outside of of North America. Yeah. Sorry. Outside of the United States. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. And you know, we went to Italy last year and I was like, Oh God, that pasta. Like (laughs) it looks, I like, so I had like a few bites and I, my, I was totally fine. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my God, this is crazy. So I like was doing all this research and realizing like how, much we've manipulated and we've added so much more gluten to the wheat in this country. And I was like, Oh God, well, of course everyone's going to have gluten issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that it's sprayed with glyphosate too, it's like a whole double whammy. Totally. Yeah. It's just, it's like the more, you know, the more you're like, Oh, that makes so much sense Mm -hmm. that people are, have this strong reaction. And the fact that, you know, my grandmother didn't, Mm -hmm. but my mom does a little bit and I have way more reaction than my mom does mm-hmm. yeah each generation kind of mm-hmm. and then either we, we either we clean this up or it's just going to go the wrong way i know i know i know for our kids yeah so okay so let's why don't we dig into some blood sugar and really so why you know why is that important for fertility so blood sugar is so important and i always am talking to anyone that will listen <laughs> you know it's one of those things where Growing up, I don't know if your mom or dad was always really like talking about eating breakfast and how it was yep. really the most like important meal of the day. And I would always like roll my eyes because the morning in our house was pure chaos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had two brothers. We had like dogs and cats and fish and birds. And it was just always a little crazy in our house. But my mom was always like, you've got to eat something. But as she went back to work and, you know, we kind of had less time in the house to cook, you know, we were eating a lot of just like sugary, carby things in the morning and crashing. And I see that a lot of times too with my clients and just the fact that we kind of feel like we need something like sweet and carby in the morning to, to kind of get us going. But blood sugar is so, so important because not only does it help regulate your cortisol levels throughout the day. It also really just helps your body feel balanced. And when you have a little too much or a little too little of that blood sugar regulation, you know, I see a lot of menstrual period cycles being kind of up and down, you know, a lot of cramps, a lot of ovulation not necessarily happening every month. So especially with women's health, not only does it help with the cortisol, which we know is like the boss hormone that we need to really be kind to, Mm -hmm. but it also just really kind of throws off 
our periods and it really kind of also it makes us grumpy <laughs> right that hangry feeling so often the crash feeling and just the need for more caffeine more sugar like more fuel that you know we'll talk about this i'm sure but that spiral of not being able to sleep waking up feeling tired and just kind of feeling like we constantly need to be putting things in our body that speed us up rather than thinking about what can I put in my body that's actually going to like keep it neutral so that I feel better. Yeah. Just kind of a vicious circle going over around and around and around doing the same thing. Yeah. And it's hard to like figure out how to slow that down when you're so caught up in that too. Cause you're just kind of like, I hear it all the time from my clients. Like I cannot survive without coffee. And I was like, why don't we just wake up, have something within an hour of waking up, whether that is a handful of nuts or a scoop of almond butter, because so often our bodies have been trained to not eat the first few hours of waking up. And then we feel ill when we reintroduce food because our body's not used to it. I see that all the time when my clients are like, I can't handle food. So it's like kind of like really going back and be like, okay, let's have some water. Let's have something with protein in it. Then maybe introduce like a little bit of coffee. So it, you don't feel like you have migraines all day long. And every single person that I've worked with or anyone that I've told this to, they're like, oh my God, I didn't, I've been relying on coffee for 20 years to wake up. Now I wake up and I don't need coffee at all. And I realize like the food is actually supporting me so much more. And a lot of the women that were doing the coffee were doing kind of like the in intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. So it was all kind of like about weight loss or maintaining weight. And then they realized that even just by having food for breakfast, breakfast, they weren't, it wasn't affecting their weight. But I feel like a lot of times that's where we're like, oh, if we just skip one meal, if we just have coffee instead, it will suppress my appetite and I won't eat as much. And that whole kind of like going back to the calorie counting kind of thing for women and women's health, like really focusing on that first kind of hour in the morning, I see so many changes in just mood and just not being cranky. I feel like so often we just feel like out of body. So by being able to like really support our adrenal glands, really support our body, it just makes such a, such a big difference. And then their periods start improving <laughs> and they're like, oh, I had no idea the coffee was actually like, or my irregular blood sugar was actually affecting this part of my body as well. So it's, it's really interesting when you like can have the time to, to slow down and, and really look at the morning. But again, I get that people are busy in the morning. So it's really thinking like, what's the first, what's the easiest first step that we can take to reintroduce just taking time in the morning for you, your body to, to feel replenished. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the hormones, so looking at, so cramps or irregular periods or ovulation issues, anything else that balancing the blood sugar can help with? As yeah, far as I mean, just hormones in, go? Like if of they, course, like insulin yeah. resistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can definitely impact fertility too, if you are up and down, right? Because if right. you're putting in, if your blood sugar levels are going up and down all day, that's definitely going to affect fertility because that's going to change your cycles a little bit. And then when your ovulation is not the same or close to the same every month, then it's going to be more challenging to also know when you're ovulating. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome is definitely, I work with a lot of women who have been diagnosed or misdiagnosed. And once we get their blood sugar stable, they their periods go from being really long, like, you know, 60 to 90 days to closer to like 30, 32, 33 days. And it changes everything. You know, it helps clear up their skin. It helps them just feel more in body. Their bloating seems to disappear a little bit with all, all women who kind of have this irregular blood sugar and balanced blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And even well, sleep, even getting having dysregulated sleep will then oh, impact God, your, yeah. your blood sugar levels the entire next day. So it's being able to 
yeah, prioritize your sleep. And you know, we work with people for months on sleep hygiene too, just like mm-hmm. getting yourself to bed before 1030 and taking the phone out and like some of these simple things that we all know, but you know, we don't, yeah. we don't actually do. So I know I always, I'm like, the bedroom is for just a few things. <laughs> Two things. Yeah. <laughs> sleep and sex. <laughs> Everything else, like keep it out. But yeah, I mean, even during pregnancy, right? Like if your blood sugar is in balance, like you're going to feel those highs and lows and, you know, a lot of women too, like the morning sickness and feeling nauseous, you know, when we can really figure out what they can tolerate, especially first trimester, like what they can actually eat and how we can support the blood sugar as much as possible. I find having them eat protein about a half an hour before they go to bed really helps them feel less nauseous in the morning when they wake up. So there's a lot of different things that you can add in depending on where you're at and how you're feeling that can definitely support your blood sugar in a way that supports you. Awesome. Awesome. And so how do we test for blood sugar? What are some ways to, for us to figure out? Yeah, there's a few ways. The first way that I always like to do it is just every time I ask anyone, I'm like, do you ever feel hangry? Like there's not one hand not phrased, mm-hmm. right? So I think that's like one of the the best ways just to see like how your body feels in general. And it's it's one of the ways that I like to start because I think it's really, really important as women to tune into our bodies and to really notice like how we feel throughout the day. So I'm always like, write down like what you eat or take a photo, like create a private Instagram, like use an app or take a, whatever helps you take a photo, write it down. But the most important, we're not looking at calories. We're just noticing like what you're eating and how you feel after like 30 minutes, an hour, two hours later. And a lot of women discover in that process that like, oh, you know what? I don't think I'm eating enough, enough. I think a lot of women that I work with that do have imbalanced blood sugar and have a lot of, you know, hormonal imbalances, a lot of them have just been under eating. So just kind of that connection and like letting them kind of tune back into their body and not feel like they need to be on a diet anymore, but more really thinking about, okay, what am I eating? How do I feel? And a lot of them discover that like a lot of the food that they're eating, like they're hungry, (laughs) like an hour later, even though they've had a meal. So a lot of times it's like focusing on what is in that meal. You know, are you getting enough protein? Are you getting enough healthy fats? And a lot of us are still hesitant about eating healthy fats. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in the eighties and (laughs) nineties. I grew up in New Hampshire. I never saw an avocado. Oh God. I probably was in college the first (laughs) time. Like I saw an avocado. It just wasn't available growing up where I grew up and we had margarine instead of butter. We never had coconut oil. That just wasn't a thing at all. So of course, if that wasn't something that you were used to eating as you were growing up, it's going to feel foreign and strange almost to kind of like add that in. But our bodies love healthy fats. And once we, and it satisfies us, right? Like, I don't know about you, but like, if I forget to eat enough fat one day, the next day, all I want is like French fries. And that's my signal. Like anytime I crave French fries, I'm like, oh, Katie, like you might not have had enough healthy fat. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta like figure it out, add it back in just making sure that your their meals are actually meals versus grazing. Mm-hmm. I feel like what I've noticed, like a lot of the, a lot of women are like, but I thought that it was better to eat like small meals throughout the day. And I said, okay, but are you actually eating small meals throughout the day? Are you just like grabbing whatever is available throughout the day, like grazing? Mm-hmm. And they all look at me and they're like, oh my God, you're so right. Like I'll grab like, something random that I don't even really know. It's like an, like a protein bar or something. And then like, I'll grab like some grapes or like candy bar, you know? So I feel like when we tend to eat, like when the whole thing of like eating small meals throughout the day, what I see happening is that we're not actually eating small meals throughout the day. We're just grabbing and whatever is in the office, whatever is super easy and available to us. And then when we really just focus on eating 
meals that support our hormones and that keeps them nourished and satisfied until the next meal, they have so much more energy. They just feel more balanced. And I know for myself too, like I just feel more balanced when I'm not constantly thinking about eating and thinking about food and wondering like where and what I'm going to eat next. Cause that's, that becomes stressful to me anyways. <laughs> Yeah, we people do in our couples coaching program, we have people do a, a food diary similar to what you were saying about mm -hmm. it's like, okay, let's see exactly what you ate instead of, you know, the calories, which we sort of count chemicals, don't count calories. But it's, yeah, how do you feel? Do you feel energized? Do you feel tired? Do you feel sluggish? Do you feel cranky, irritable? You know, what? So, and really kind of getting, there's so the physical side of things, you know, you're feeling bloated, the mood side of things to really correlate that. Cause a lot of times we won't even know that. It was because because we had the the sugary thing or the the carb heavy thing in the morning mm -hmm. that then we take that crash and we don't really we we may correlate it a little bit but then we keep doing the same thing over and over again so this is just really highlights it to go oh wait because I thought for years I was just a cranky person <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> oh totally pain in the butt but yeah now it's like oh and I used to I get totally get that hangry thing I remember like with my husband we'd be in the car and be like stop the car now I need to eat or I'm gonna rip your head off so, oh my god yeah yes. the hangry thing is is huge and the, and getting kind of shaky and like I need to eat now which mm -hmm. is which is a huge a huge clue about the blood sugar going yeah. the wrong way so well, it's interesting you say that about your husband because it's funny because my <laughs> every, anytime that happens he's like who are you? I'm like, you just need to get me food right now. <laughs> like, I feel like I turn into this whole, like this whole other person and he's like scared. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, I just need to eat. And I've told you this, like whenever it's like mostly when we're like on road trips, right. We're yeah. traveling in the car and there's no place to stop. And I've run out of snacks I know. and I'm like, I told you like an hour ago that I'm going <laughs> to, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> You know, it's just funny. Like, who are you? <laughs> I, know. I know now, and I wasn't, I used to always just like run out the house and not bring snacks. And it's, I just really wasn't that kind of person that came out with a load of snacks. And now I'm like, oh my God, every time I go, I make sure I have water and there's some sort of snack, even though I don't know I might not be going very far, but just in case somehow I get stuck somewhere and then at least I won't, I won't get hungry. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I always have like yeah. nuts in my, in my car and mm. water and uh, yeah. I just mm -hmm. think, and it's one of those things where I just, it brings me comfort knowing that like it's there. Yeah. So if I need it, fine. If I don't, it's not that I like need it all the time. It's just yeah. like there just in case it's like, so, so I have like, sometimes when I forget about it too, I'm like, oh, they're probably stale by now. Maybe I should like, switch these out. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it makes such, such a difference. So I feel like that's the best, that's one of the best ways is just like get back into your body Let's really tune into our body. Let's see what I noticed when I did it. Like, you know, I realized that eggs do nothing for me. Mm. I can eat three eggs, like a three egg omelet, and then an hour later be starving. And it was every time that I was eating eggs, I was, I never could get to the next meal without needing like a, a pretty decent sized snack in between. So I was like, oh, well, maybe that's not actually the best thing for me in my body. So I've kind of switched and changed things around for my own breakfast and realizing like when I have what has been supporting me the most lately is I make overnight oats mm. with full fat coconut milk and chia seeds. Nice. And then I add like all the nuts and seeds, like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, cashews, cacao nibs, shredded coconut, and I'll have that. And it for supports me right now. Um, I'll probably get sick of it sometime soon, but for now, like it's really supporting me versus when I was doing different things, I would realize like, Oh, like, I don't know if this is the best for me. And then obviously like seasons change different things, your body starts wanting, but the egg thing was like fascinating to me when I like finally pinpointed that, pointed that out. Yeah. Cause egg, eggs are a top allergen. A lot of people are, yeah, mm -hmm. are, have reactions to them. So yeah. interesting. Yeah, and the overnight oats, that, that's an awesome thing to keep you. I find I, in the summer I'm doing more smoothies. And I think now switching to the overnight oats, I felt like all of a sudden this week, I thought, ooh, maybe it's time to do those again. Because they're, yeah, they are very satisfying. And I can literally go for, if I have it in the morning, go for like four, four or five hours until, until lunch and, yeah. and, not, and not die. Yeah, <laughs> exactly.
exactly. Mm-hmm. I like that. And then if you, if you want to investigate further, you know, you could get like a glucose meter. Mm-hmm. A lot of people feel myself included. Like I have a very, very hard time <laughs> pricking mm-hmm. my finger, but you could definitely do that. You could have your doctor test your fasting glucose. You know, there's definitely different things. Like if we've really looked at your diet, if we've really added in healthy fats and enough protein, and we really feel like we've got your meals to a place that feels supported, but you still feel like you're feeling hangry or you still feel off, you still kind of think that there's something else going on, like definitely go to your doctor and have them run some additional tests for you. They can definitely order some tests for you to kind of check that out. Mm-hmm. And what about the, so the normal, so your normal blood sugar level, um, what's, what's that? The ranges, right. Depending, I feel like I always, I don't know any other countries. I know that we're in different countries right now. <laughs> so you can kind of probably fill us in on the Canadian because I feel like we, oh God, what's the word I'm searching for? The, yeah. The metric, the metric system. Material. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to fast, right? So fasting blood sugar is about 80 to 90. Mm -hmm. And then if you're doing a different test with a doctor, you know, again, I feel like a lot of times when I do the tests with doctors, they come back with different metrics as well. So when you want to kind of do it over a period of time too, like if you do a fasting glucose test and your glucose is very high, you want to kind of do that for a few months to see what is actually going on. What is it in Canada? Yeah, it's 4.5 to 5. Okay, so it's yeah. definitely measured differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then what about AMC, A- A1C then? What's the benefit of doing that one? Yeah, so the de- benefit of doing that one is, you know, your doctor, you're doing it with your doctor. He, he or she orders it for you. And then this is something that you would do over time. So I believe it's like a three to four month period of time that you would actually go and get tested. So you can actually see what's going on. I honestly find that when people are okay with pricking their finger and they can do at home meter and actually do that with different types of food, that sometimes they actually gather more information based on what they're actually eating. But again, it just kind of depends on what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, and really correlate it with that food diary, see exactly yeah. what, what's going on with you and tune into your own body. But yeah, and I guess as far as the markers too, to be able really also in episode 32, we, we go through blood chemistry and look at it through functional levels. So all the times here is, the, you know, looking at your blood work and really becoming your own app, getting, mm-hmm. getting educated. So your fasting blood sugar, yeah, 80 to 90. And, yeah. And 4.5 to 5 for, for metric. And then- yeah, and, and again, like, even if the doctor doesn't tell you to fast, I would still recommend if they're going to be testing your blood sugar, your glucose, like to fast. Sometimes the doctors are, at least some of my doctors are kind of like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, I think it really does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially if you are feeling like the blood sugar is unstable and you really want to focus on that a little bit more. Just an FYI, I feel like I hear that sometimes with my doctor and a few of my clients too. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so we talked a little bit about this, but some of the complications of high blood sugar, what would some of those things be if someone's got high blood sugar? Yeah. So high blood sugar, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, type diabetes and everything like that too. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, you, it's, it's one of those things where you might feel like your weight. That's a lot of times that's kind of where we notice it first. Sometimes is like either your weight fluctuates a lot. You have a lot of weight loss really low energy levels, headaches and migraines I see a lot too, and just having a lot of sugar and carb cravings. And again, I know that might be challenging to decipher (laughs) Mm -hmm. if you already have a lot of of those similar cravings. So again, that's why we always want to kind of start with your diet first and then see, are you still having these really high sugar cravings and things like that? Again, it depends too on the stress and the sleep, your exercise as well. But over time, you know, high blood sugar can definitely lead to insulin resistance. And we definitely want to be mindful about that because of diabetes and anything else that kind of comes along with high blood sugar and not able to kind of regulate and recognize insulin anymore. Interestingly enough, Two of 
two of my friend's husbands were recently diagnosed with type one diabetes oh as a, older adults. So that's just something too, that I've noticed a little bit more than, than before. Cause normally with type one, you're born with it. Your body's not making insulin, right? Mm -hmm. And then as we get older, sometimes with our diet and blood sugar being off or not, we can develop type two diabetes. But I have noticed type one with adults is becoming, I don't want to say common, but it was definitely surprising to see that. Yeah. Triggering an autoimmune disease. Yeah. Is, yeah. A lot of people that are coming to us with undiagnosed Hashimoto's and, mm -hmm. and RA and different Crohn's, yeah, things like that. Yeah. So that was, that's definitely one thing that I noticed and that I was very surprised about and, um, it took a long time to diagnose as well because it's just something that they weren't even like really focused on as 35 year old male. They weren't really thinking it was type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so high blood sugar. So as you said, low energy levels, the, the sugar carb cravings, headaches, migraines, and then the weight issues. So either yeah, weight fluctuations, I guess, weight loss. And obviously when you think of this, you also think of, the increased urination and um, ex excessive thirst too, I guess, other ones. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And Which then, again, so is also, sorry not to interrupt, is okay. also something to be mindful about, right? Because a lot of us aren't drinking enough water to begin with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, looking back and just seeing like drinking enough water, are you getting enough electrolytes? And then if you're still doing that and then you still have excessive thirst, like that's a sign. So kind of, again, going back, I always say, let's go back to the basics and see if those feel are consistent. And then what is actually happening from that? And then the low blood sugar, which I think was, was more me. So what, what are oh some God, things? This is me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things we see here with low blood sugar? I mean, God, hangry right away, right? Yeah. Like super irritable, cranky. I felt like my mood was like up and down at three o'clock. I always felt it like at, at three o'clock. I had a really hard time sleeping as well. And I also developed <laughs> this, and I've talked to a lot of women about this recently, and they're like, oh my God, that's happened to me too. I would have excessive sweating under my armpits. Been there. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> and I would literally like, I, cause I took the subway to work and I would leave, I would put deodorant on again. This was before I switched over. This was a long time ago. Uh, now I do kind of the all natural deodorant, mm -hmm. but I would like, mm -hmm. I wore, I was like, I cannot find a deodorant that like nope. keeps me dry. <laughs> so I would put and stuff tissues yeah. under my armpits so I could get to work and then my shirts weren't like drenched, but we're I was not having pits down, down to your waist. <laughs> like, but I was always hey, freezing. Like I was yeah. so cold, but like my armpits were super sweaty. Mm -hmm. um, so it went away <laughs> God, <laughs> when I started really noticing that my, what I was eating was actually affecting the sweating. But yeah, that was like that for me. And now that I know that excessive sweating is part of having low blood sugar, I'm like, oh, well, duh. <laughs> yeah. No, I had like where I was, I was allergic to all these different deodorants. I was trying, not, no deodorants work for me. And then I thought, okay, maybe it's because I'm shaving. So I went and got like my, I had laser hair removal on my armpits, spent like $800, $900 like years ago to have all this off. And then, and it's still, still nothing worked. And it wasn't until I changed my diet that I'm like, and then I switched mm -hmm. to a natural deodorant where I'm like, and even back then I would try the natural deodorants and literally after two hours, I'm like, what is going on? This is yep. disgusting. So yeah, it's all that the whole, the whole body is connected. It's not just one little thing, right? It's, it's interesting how that yes. works. But so, oh, we're like destined to be friends because <laughs> <laughs> the, the armpit sweating. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. Some other oh. things, you know, just yeah. feeling like really jittery, like my body kind of like shaking and jittery. Yeah. I also feel like I would get these weird it like you're standing still but you feel like your head is moving, like kind of like that lightheaded feeling and then feeling like your vision is a little little off. Those are some things that I experienced as as well. And tons and tons and tons and tons of headaches and a lot of migraines. 
Yeah, the headaches. Yeah, and then the extreme hunger or or either slight nausea too. And another one is like the and this could be with thyroid too, but sort of the slow healing of of wounds and dryness and cuts and bruises and stuff like mm. that could be could be a sign. Yeah. Yeah. And so we talked about stress here, but how does stress impact blood sugar? Really, you know, we know stress impacts everything. But oh god, <laughs> I know it's so interesting that even going back to like what that conversation with the, my first holistic doctor and her mm-hmm. being like, you got to learn how to get your stress under yeah. control. Yeah. It totally spikes your blood sugar. It just changes everything. It, so when you're stressed out and your blood sugar spikes, of course you're going to crave sugar, right? Because your body's like, I need energy. I need something to kind of keep us going. But yeah, when you experience too much stress, it can definitely elevate those cortisol levels that I call it the bitchy bossy hormone. (laughs) And then it just spikes everything. God. And then what happens too is when your body feels like it's under stress all the time, it can steal from other hormones, right? If it needs that cortisol because it feels like you're in that fight or flight moment. And that when that happens, you know, it steals, it doesn't give it back. So I see what happens a lot of times too is just kind of like us feeling really for prolonged periods of time, feeling really stressed out. And then what happens is all of a sudden we feel really irritable and our body has a hard time calming down. And then, you know, a lot of times women are like, I'm really low on progesterone. All of a sudden, like my doctor is like, wants to put me on cream and pills and Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. So I, I see that all the time with stress. And one of the things that is fascinating to me and something that I always do as like a check in for myself, I'm always like, okay, Scale to one to 10, not to, I, not that I like numbers, but let's put a number to it because our brain seems to figure that out easier. Are you, one is no stress, 10 is high stress. Every single person always tells me they're at a six, no matter what. And I'm always like, okay, not to make you stressed out, but let's add a three to that. Because if you're at a six, you're probably not there, probably, right? You're probably a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. And if you've been at a six for like months and months and months at a time, you don't even know that you're higher, that you're actually you're really stressed not. out. Yeah. <laughs> so this yeah. is your normal. Yeah, this is the normal. way you feel yeah. every day. Mm-hmm. And it is. I mean, I feel like as women, like we are still doing so much all the time. And, you know, I think I feel this is something that I'm constantly practicing. And I like to say practice because Mm -hmm. that's going to be my journey. I feel like for a long, long, long time as of all of us, but it's just this practice of being like, do I really need to be adding something else to my plate? Like, can I, how do I, how can I delegate? How can I say no? How can I really make sure that I take time for myself every day? You know, it's the whole oxygen, oxygen mask theory. Right. right. But it's difficult. It's challenging because I just feel like we keep so much in our, in our head and like, are we're constantly thinking things out? Like we process things very differently than men do. Like, I don't know about you, but I, if something's going on, I've got to tell like 10 people and then I feel better <laughs> the way that my brain processes. So I feel like we just have so much going on day to day, but then even in our mind, we're constantly like, analyzing and processing so it's kind of for me I'm not amazing at meditation you know but like I try every day just to stop and just breathe and just let my brain try to calm down for me walking is has been so life-changing in terms of stress release whenever I'm feeling really overwhelmed I leave my phone and I just go outside and I walk, whether it's five minutes, sometimes it's an hour. And then I come back, I feel clear. I feel like in my body again, and then I can like actually move forward. Yeah. A lot of it is like, is noticing our patterns. Like for years, I would always, I just love doing a lot of things. And so I would always pile all these things on myself mm-hmm. and, and they were all fun, exciting things that I was doing. Totally. Yeah. And, I'm like, and now I see, oh, there you go again. There you go again. 
putting all these things because because what will happen is I get excited and then about a month to six weeks later I'm like what the heck was I doing this is like way too much and then I get resentful and then I get ticked off and so it, like it was this pattern oh for like three years and years is what I'm doing now I'm like oh there you go you're excited about a bunch of stuff you want to do it all now you're super impatient no let's like pull it back and sort of it's to be able to see those things that we do because there's patterns all through our you know everything that we do so to be able to, to pick it out a little bit and when in doubt really especially when you're preparing your body for pregnancy and trying, mm -hmm. trying to conceive to actually really pull the whole thing back a bit and really focus on that self-care and yeah like you said walking walking I walk my dog like twice a day I, I love walking even in that to do a mindful walk sometimes I find myself on the 20-minute walk I have gone off in my head somewhere so it's really to just mm -hmm. notice my dog and I've talked about this a lot on the podcast but notice what my dog is doing seeing her sniffing you know the, the ground and looking around and looking all happy and not she's like totally there and I'm off thinking about whatever. So it is yeah. that mindfulness. It's like catching. Yeah. I went, I saw, um, do you know who light Watkins is? No, he is, he's from Venice and I was at a, I was at Wonderless this past weekend and I oh, woke, cool. I'm not a morning person, but I was like so excited to go see him. He did a 7am morning meditation and the way that he explains meditation was so spot on. And I really liked what he said. He was like, okay, your brain is never going to turn off. Like, let's just be real here. <laughs> let's be okay with that. Because I feel like we put so much, again, stress on being perfect in meditation. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what I want you to do instead is just think of like your happy thought, like whatever that is, like, is it your dog? Is it your partner? Like, is it the ocean? He's like, I want you to just think about that. And like, let that be a very like mute thought. And any time that you feel like your brain's spiraling out, you just come back to that thought. And it, I don't know, the way he explained it, I was sitting there and I thought we were only meditating for like maybe two minutes and it had been 20 minutes. Mm, yeah, those are, those are the best times they were. I'm like, really? I feel yeah. like I was just close my eyes and oh my goodness, it's been an hour. <laughs> so I've been trying to, because that's my, that's the most challenging, right? Is like when the thoughts kind of like go away. Like I have a hard time coming back, but just picking. So I'm like, Oh, I love, I love my dog. <laughs> so I was, I love my husband as well. If you're listening. Um, but it was just kind of that moment where I'm like, okay, if I just have that happy thought that I can come back to, but for anybody check, he has amazing, amazing meditations. He has a book, but it makes meditation simple. <laughs> which I really appreciate. His name is Light Watkins? Light Watkins. He said, so he said he wasn't born with the name Light. I mean, he was like, it's a funny story on how I got this name, but he didn't, he didn't share with us that morning. So I need to kind of look into like what happened with that. Cool. Yeah. I've, I've started doing heart maths, which is kind of similar mm -hmm. where you're, and I've got the little, this little um, tech gadget where you, it looks at your heart rate, very, very heart rate variability and being able to focus on yeah, a loving thought in your heart and keeping that in there. And it's interesting as I, I do the meditation, I can see where I've wandered off down a path of whatever, because it's it'll it'll say if you're green, blue, or, or red. And I'm like, oh, I hung out in the red a little bit there. What was going on? And I was, you know, it's yeah. interesting to see, oh, I could probably tell what I was doing at that point. I'd lost track of my breathing and I was thinking of my list. But yeah, yeah. it's sort of a similar thing, just focusing on that one, heart, that really, that thought that just gives you mm -hmm. peace and uh, like a really good feeling. Yeah. So and I think too, like, with fertility, you know, because we are under a lot of pressure all the time, you know, we don't even make that connection that the stress could be impacting our fertility. Mm -hmm. I find with like a few of my clients, I was like, okay, if we've got your ovulation pretty, we know when you're ovulating, like take off, if you can take off a few days from work or hopefully maybe it comes on the weekend and like just relax. But so many of my friends who were struggling to conceive, they like went on vacation and they're like, it happens, it happens. And they tried to plan the vacation around when they were ovulating. And most of the time, like when they were relaxed with their first child, that's when they actually were able to conceive. Um, I've seen it a bunch of times and it's really interesting. And my friend was like, you're, there was no way under the amount of stress that I was in that if I had been trying to have the baby and then rush off to work and then like figure all the stuff out, I don't think I would ever have gotten pregnant. 
Yeah, and it's not to beat ourselves up, right? No, not at all. How many people hear that? Oh, just relax. You get pregnant. People want no, not at all. I'm not saying that, but I think it was. I know, no, I totally know what you're saying, but it is. It is to be aware of. Oh, wait a minute. If I, and sometimes you just kind of come to that realization yourself. It's like, oh, I got, I got to pull back here a little bit. I, I need Mm -hmm. to take a break. I deserve a damn break. Totally. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I am doing way more than I thought, but day to day, we don't come to think of that. Yeah. But I think it was just interesting with this one friend in particular that, I mean, they had been trying for a long time. And, and then she even was like, when I realized that, and then when we got pregnant, I realized like I could not, and I didn't want to continue doing what I was doing because I knew that it wouldn't have been healthy for me or the baby to continue. So just pulling back from work and delegating more. And sometimes we, we need that wake up call, right? Where we're like, it's not just me and it, or it is just me. And I need to kind of like, just let go of some things. She's like, I don't, this doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Like, I don't even know what that looks like or means, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Yeah. And and we've talked a few things about some foods that can help balance blood sugar, but is there anything that's sort of your go-to, a few things you you talk about for having to to balance blood sugar with foods? Yeah. I'm always like, please eat more fat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Seriously. Let's really, really nourish your body. Let's nourish your hormones. Let's keep you feeling more stable. Also fiber, you know, I could do a better job at this as well, but just making sure that we're eating enough fiber Mm -hmm. throughout the day, not only does it kind of keep you feeling full longer, but it also slows down the glucose and how it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. So lots of, lots of vegetables, you know, I love nuts and seeds and depending on where you're at with your blood sugar, I always suggest to like, if you're going to have fruit, because fruit is good for you, pair it with a protein. Mm -hmm. So that it can really, depending on how your blood sugar is, you know, it just feels like it helps it keep a little bit more stable and neutral to have a protein with the fruit. Even though there's fiber in the fruit, you know, if your body is sensitive to your blood sugar, um, I find that that is really helpful. And again, it kind of keeps you satisfied even, even longer as well. Yeah. Like an apple with almond butter or what's what's your, do you have any go-to ones? I love apples with almond butter and then I sprinkle cinnamon on there because that's also really good for blood sugar blood sugar too yeah yeah I put cinnamon whenever I make smoothies I put that in there I love I actually love bananas with almond butter I mean I don't know if I would not love anything with almond butter (laughs) but I feel like the apple because I like that crispiness of it too it just feels like especially in the afternoon if you're having a long day like just crunching on something just feels really satisfying Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I really, I like that as well. And even, you know, what we were talking about before too, just really focusing on, are you eating enough food? I just feel like I see this over and over again where we are not eating enough, enough food. And again, it's slowly, gradually just kind of notice like your food journal or however you're kind of keeping track of how you feel and just having everything. If you eat this, how are you feeling? If we add a little bit more to the meal, does it actually keep you feeling nourished longer versus just feeling like you're constantly eating? Cause then you're putting stress on the digestive system. If you're not allowing time for your digestive system to actually digest food mm-hmm, as rest, well. Yeah. Right. And, they need to rest. <laughs> yeah. And what about some sweeteners? What's your take on, on any of those? You know, it's so interesting because I personally, I use either honey or maple syrup. I'm not a huge fan of stevia. I find that it doesn't taste very well. So if you want something that like is a little bit healthier, that kind of keeps the blood sugar a little bit more balanced, like I find like that's just not satisfying to most people. But the honey maple syrup, it's natural, right? There's minerals, there's nutrients in there. So I find like that those are two good things that I like to do. And then I've been obsessed with found these at Whole Foods. So they're calling them flavors, but it's not. They have a vanilla and an almond. They call them almond or vanilla flavor. But then when you look at the ingredients, it's just vanilla bean or almond. And then they add a little bit of water. So what they're doing is that they're basically kind of like, I don't even know the the right term, but like maybe extracting the, because almonds, 
are sweet. Vanilla bean is a little sweet. So I've been using the oil as like a sweetener, but there's no added sugar to it. It's just the natural sweetness. So I've been, I've been actually loving that a lot. I know they're not everywhere though, so they just started selling that at Whole Foods. Oh, did they? Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. yeah. So with stevia, you want to make sure you get the organic one. That's all. Yes, fine. and um, like a lot of them are like so processed. I mean, yeah. stevia is supposed to be green, right? If you look at the herb, it's mm-hmm. green, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're all kind of like processed white powder. Yeah, white powder. So that always makes me nervous when like they take something that's natural from the earth, and then they heavily process it. So like raw honey real maple syrup. Like I grew up in New Hampshire. Like you've got to get like real Mm -hmm. maple syrup. Like don't go for like the white, whatever. And Jemima for years I did that. Oh my goodness. And cause I, after I had my daughter, I I gained a bit of weight and I was like, Oh, I need to go on Weight Watchers to get rid of this. And then I don't know what I was thinking, but anyways, I did that back in the day and, and then I was counting points. And so I Mm -hmm. got on Aunt Jemima and for years I had that, which is like, corn syrup and then and I grew up with eating healthy foods anyways and so now getting the real maple syrup and yeah it is expensive but you only need a little bit it, that's the thing too with right when you have honey when you have maple syrup like you you have a little bit and it's it satisfies you mm-hmm. where like I could eat like all the peanut M&Ms in the world and mm-hmm. not only getting a horrible headache and feel like a tummy ache coming on but I'm like never satisfied ever. Yeah, exactly. I need like 10. <laughs> and then I'm like, just feel sick. I don't ever feel like I'm like satisfied where like the honey and the maple syrup, like you don't need a lot of it. Um, I actually love anything coconut. Like I love using full fat coconut milk. Mm-hmm. I feel like putting that in my smoothies, just it's, it tastes sweet to me. Again, it takes time for your taste buds to change you know, slowly eat more greens, eat more fiber and veggies and things like that. And like, you'll, you'll notice that it's sweet, but like, if you do coconut milk and add cinnamon or nutmeg, I mean, God, it's, I think it tastes like really good and it satisfies my craving. Yeah. I'm the same, but for years I had to have this, this sweet thing and it did take a little while to adjust to it. Right. When you go off the processed sugar. So be kind to yourself, right? Like this doesn't happen overnight. Like everything we're talking about takes time. <laughs> so be very kind to yourself Absolutely. with that process. And do you have a book that you can, a book or a website or an app, anything you'd like to recommend? So I, I was thinking about this earlier. I love um, Mark Hyman's blood sugar solution mm-hmm. book. I felt like it was such an easy introduction to how food affects your blood sugar. And then for more har- hormonal, I love um, the period repair manual by Laura, Dr. Laura Bryden. Yeah. She's uh, from New Zealand. Well, she's from Canada and she lives in New Zealand, Mm -hmm. but her, she goes more into the different um, PCOS having kind of different types of PCOS and is it blood sugar? Is it something else? So I feel like she, her period repair manual is very, very helpful when you're looking more into hormones and blood sugar and, and different things like that. And she, she's just an amazing amazing doctor. Mm -hmm. They both are, but I really, I really am grateful for her. Awesome. And then any success story you'd like to share the pinpoint? Yeah. You know, um, this one woman that I was working with, she realized that she wasn't getting any, she's trying to conceive, she's trying to get pregnant. And she realized that she felt the most of the time women right before their periods, we get like, we might feel bloated or crampy and things like that. And she was experiencing those things during ovulation. Uh, So we spent a lot of time, you know, really focusing on eating more healthy fats. She had just gotten married. So she had lost like all this weight. And I was like, got to kind of like get your weight up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But so we really focused on eating more healthy fats, like getting into like a healthy place with her body and her mind and not feeling like she had to count calories. And all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but like gradually, that's a better word. Mm-hmm. Her symptoms around ovulation totally disappeared. Mm-hmm. And she was experiencing such a more neutral, balanced month and started the process of trying to get pregnant. Unfortunately and sadly, you know, she miscarried the first time. And then the second time she got pregnant and it, she has a beautiful baby girl who is four and a half months right now. But it was, 
And then the, the thing is why it always took a long time to prepare her body for pregnancy, getting pregnant, and then also spending time through each trimester together. Mm -hmm. So focusing on first trimester foods that really support her second trimester, you know, and then getting ready for labor and then just the fourth trimester too. And just really making sure that there's enough food for you, that you're continuing with some of your supplements, that you're also being taken care of as well. So it was really beautiful to kind of like be there from the very beginning. Like I think we started working together like maybe two months after she got married and then being able to see, you know, two years later, almost like this, this little beautiful, cute little chunky, chubby little girl. She's so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and kind of that process. And interestingly enough, her coworker got pregnant, I think like a month before her, but didn't do anything to prepare her body. Like, you know, wasn't maybe not eating as healthy as she possibly could. And it was just really interesting for her, my client to see the difference when you're supporting your body versus like not supporting it in terms of hormone balance and things like that. So it was just kind of like a really interesting case study, I guess, in a way to right. see the difference between my client and then her coworker as well. Yeah. The pregnancy and the postpartum period. And yeah. you had to take this and time my, to really my client that. was like feeling, and again, this is like, not everyone is going to have the same experience and we don't know what is going to happen, but it was just really interesting. And she's like, I swear it's because we took the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I really tried to eat as healthy as I could with all the cravings and everything. And then she did have a easier labor and an easier recovery. And I'm using easy very lightly because right. <laughs> I know it's not easy, but in comparison and even with like a lot of her like mom friends. So that was like an interesting kind of case study to see how when you support your body as a woman in terms of women's health and hormones, that it really supports you back. Hmm, yeah, I love it. And so you have got a, a free ebook called Balance Your Hormones ready for our listeners and um, share with us what they can expect with that. Yeah, so it's a quick little read, just a few tips um, that can actually really help you slowly start supporting your hormones in different way. So we really look at food and how we can add things in to really support your hormones. And then a few days later in your inbox, you'll actually get some of my favorite quick snacks and nice. treats that are really healthy for you. Because again, we don't want to deprive or restrict yourself, right? But by making different choices and eating in a way that supports your hormones, but sometimes we're like, how do I even do that? Like you're telling me all these great tips. I'm trying to like eat more fiber, eat more fat, but how do I actually put that together? So you'll get that as well a few days later. Awesome. So they can go to, you can go to Katie with a, Katie with an IE, Bressac, B-R-E-S-S-A-C-K.com forward slash free gift. And I'll have that in the show notes as well. So awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing about uh, blood sugar with us and all your, your words of wisdom. It was, uh, it was really good, great to chat. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Hey there, Sarah Clark here. So are you struggling to have your baby? First of all, please know that my heart goes out to you. I support couples worldwide who are struggling with infertility to conceive and have healthy babies. Women like Rita, who gave birth to her beautiful daughter after following my fertility coaching system. Or Danielle, who after two failed IUIs was able to get pregnant after a supercharger fertility discovery call with me. So here's how you get my help for free. So I offer a free supercharger fertility discovery call. And on that call, I'll create a plan with you that is going to help you fast track your success. So this call is not for everyone. And I'm really picky about who I get to speak with. And I have a strict but totally reasonable criteria that needs to be met in order for us to move forward. So here's who I can help. So first of all, you need to be able to explore your infertility diagnosis in a new light. So this offers for people who are open-minded, they're coachable, and if, you, and if you can do that and want to double or triple your chances at the fertility clinic or get pregnant, awesome. So let's get on the phone and chat. 
Also, you must be an action taker. So someone who's committed to seeing results, you're able to follow directions. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything bizarre. But if you're one of those people who like to consume a ton of information, but don't like to spend time implementing and seeing results, then the call's not really for you. So I only wanna spend time with people who are genuinely committed to their own success. So just click on the link in the show notes and apply, or go to fabfertile, F-A-B-Fertile.com and click on the free consult. So it's a really short application that just tells me about your health, how long you've been trying to conceive, and how soon you'd like to be pregnant. So seriously, this is gonna be the best time you've ever spent on your fertility. Looking forward to chatting. Talk soon. Thank you for listening to Get Pregnant Naturally. Seriously, it means the world to me that you're here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming episodes. I'm excited to offer you a special gift. If you're a U.S. resident, text FERTILE to 345-345. You'll be prompted to enter your email address and you'll receive our Fertility Yoga Download. In this 20-minute intro video, we focus on a calming and peaceful practice to connect back to your heart. These simple fertility yoga poses can help quiet negative thoughts and make you feel more in control. Download it now and get started today. So for U.S. residents, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E, to 345-345. For non-U.S. residents, go to www.yogafreebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E dot com to access your special gift. That's www.yogafreebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E dot com to access the free fertility yoga download. And I love this quote by Dr. Mark Hyman, medical director of the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine and chairman of the Institute for Functional Medicine. Functional medicine is medicine by cause, not by symptom. Functional medicine practitioners don't in fact treat disease. We treat your body's ecosystem. We get rid of the bad stuff, put in the good stuff, And because your body is an intelligent system, it does the rest. Thanks for listening. Until next time.